Simon, you asked for it, so we're going to be looking at this triplex for you. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. I'm James Wise. This is the show on Holton Wise TV where we work together one-on-one, -on -one, right? We help you guys start, build, or grow your real estate portfolios. I'm doing that for my man Simon. If you're watching this video and you're not Simon and you think that sounds pretty cool, you want to do it, go ahead, give us an email, sales at holtonwise.com, include your phone number, or if you're ready to rock and roll, click the show notes below or go to the MLS search and analysis show on holtonwise.com. As for you, Simon. Uh, it's been a little while since you and I have worked together. Uh, we did two videos for you a little ways back, and then you just recently uh, saw this particular triplex, and you thought uh, it could possibly work for you, and you asked me to, to do a write-up for you, do a video for you, check it out for you. I actually just did this for another investor. He was interested in it as well. He sent it to me. He ultimately passed because we did a few other videos for him, and he went with another option. So the first thing I want to do today is show you the financial breakdown that I gave to him. 16, 62 Hillcrest Road, Cleveland Heights, 44108. Been on the market a little over three months. Listed at $135,000. Now, what we have, this, this property is listed by a, a realtor out of Berkshire Hathaway. And as you can see uh, through the photos, well, first of all, the exterior photos look pretty good, right? It looks pretty nice out there. Uh, things are looking good. But once we get inside, we are going to have to do a little bit of work, right? You see this bathtub, guys? Your great-grandma's uh, like pink bathtub ain't going to cut it for tenants these days, okay? And that, uh, that flooring and stuff, that's just not going to work. So we're going to need to do some updates. Now, as far as, like, the photos you're looking at here, they actually look pretty decent, okay? But I still think we're going to be spending approximately 10 k in each of these units, fixing them up. Like, photos like this are tough for people because, like, from afar, from, like, a six-foot-away stance or from your phone or your computer, like things look nice it looks rent ready it looks fresh but it's actually not like somebody moved out and it wasn't repainted so like if you get really close you can see like it's all chipped here it's all chipped there 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 right there right if you if you like look really really close you can see all that stuff and but from the photos it, it doesn't look that way but when you're actually like in the homes with the tenants and they're in there these are the things that like just stick out right and we got this ugly flooring ugly transition there and it looks like they just did like a like a deck paint uh which i'm not too thrilled upon like even in this room right like you probably it's it's very hard to see it from where you're at but like right here all this this paint this is all chipping and peeling like it's all jacked up right here right here you can see the floor it's coming up here coming up here right again from far away pictures these things all look rent ready look fine but like when you're actually in the property showing it to tenants these things they stick out like a sore thumb uh we're gonna have to totally redo around here right this is all leaky and grimy and nasty uh this bad boy right here i'd like to see them a little bit more updated right get yourself a better quality tenant when you provide uh, updates just another example right it, it looks okay from afar but like look right under this windowsill here you see all that all that peeling okay that's got to be addressed there's possibly a leak here you got a nice little hole right there all that stuff right here okay just just stuff like that like this is like a might even be like a hole in the floor with a really horrible patch right there just things of that nature right so it's not cosmetically up to snuff you know both these kitchens they're outdated okay so that's what we're dealing with uh here's the mechanicals everything is uh, said to be in working order various ages uh you know mid to end of life okay nothing's totally brand new these might be like 10 15 years old five to ten years old that one actually looks pretty new though that that last little hot water tank okay so that's what we have so you do have to do some work to this, but it's still a very nice property, priced very, very well, right? Because what you get, okay, 
Here, here's another issue I had. What I got on the screen for you here, this is uh, a market estimate of the rent roll. Now, as you see there, it says three bed, one bath, three bed, one bath, one bed, one bath. Okay, there's three units in this property. As you see, I put question marks there. The listing agent, we've reached out to him. We have not heard back from him as of the time of me filming this video for you guys. Uh, I don't know why he chose to do his listing this way, but he's got one unit occupied, right? That unit one, that's totally occupied, does not provide what the rental amount actually is. So we've got no clue what the existing tenant is paying. But market rent should be 800 assuming it's a 3-1. But we are not 100% sure that my bed bath count is correct, right? He put in the information that the, the house is three units and it has a total of uh, eight bedrooms, okay? So what you see on the screen, 3131 and then uh, 21, right? That's the eight bedrooms, right? 313121, okay? But I don't know for a fact if the house actually, if, if those are like the exact numbers because this dude doesn't break it down by unit. And again, we haven't heard back from him. But assuming we have 313121, we should be getting a rent roll of 2150 from this building, right? So 25,800. Now, is it going to be exactly how I've listed it here? No, because I, I don't know if we have, a, if we're dealing with a 313121, uh, if we're dealing with, with uh, let's see, I don't know, if we're dealing with some other combination, right? I don't know what the units are, but with a total of eight, divide it by three, I think we'll get somewhere around the 2150 range, right? I'm, I'm working off of limited information from what the guy gives me. I don't know why anyone would do a listing with an occupied unit, let people know it's occupied, not actually give you uh, the information of what they're paying paying nor give you the information for uh the beds and baths and the vacant units but that's what we're dealing with right so one of these is occupied two are empty i've laid out market rents for everything now to get to market rents you got to fix up all that jazz i just talked about right so as far as the price though 135 i think they priced it very very well i think we try to squeeze out a tiny little discount let's try to get it at 130 and to clean up those units and get us market rent tenants i think we'll be putting in about twenty thousand dollars right so that's going to be approximately a hundred and fifty thousand dollars now there is a minor pos that you have to assume uh, i will go ahead and uh send that to you let me pop it on the computer screen here real quick it is like essentially you have to assume this but it's more or less irrelevant because it's things you would need to do like right? that twenty thousand dollar number is going to cover this stuff because like it's pretty much nothing right just like caulk around the bathtub and, and floor seams so it, it, it's just negligible stuff here right repair the leak at the bathtub faucet handle these are all things you need to do to the property to get it to be rent ready as well but the city is going to need to inspect it and clear these things off though so that's where we're getting our 20k right our 20k is going to be to get it totally rent ready and clear off that pos right so that's where we want to do so with all that said all right, we'd be all into this at 150. We bring in the 2150 a month. I anticipate us spending almost 1200 a month on average, leaving you guys with an NOI of 961, almost a, a little bit over 11,000 a year, right? Almost 12,000 a year, right? 11 and a half thousand would be your NOI. If we pick it up at 150, right? That makes it a 7.7 .7 cap because we have 130,000 to buy it, $20,000 of initial investment, right? Our mortgage down payment is 32 and a half. That's 25% of that 130. But our cash on cash return, remember, when we calculate our cash on cash return, guys, we're not taking our NOI and dividing that by just our down payment. We're taking our NOI, which is going to be that 11 and a half, and we're dividing it by 32,500 plus that $20,000 of repairs, right? So that's how we get it, right? We get 11 and a half divided by like 52 and a half gives us a 13. 13.4% cash on cash return, right? So even though you have to do uh, that much uh, renovations, it's still very, very good deal. Priced very, very well. I pulled up the comps for you guys. Now, you may have heard me say this in the past. Uh, here in the Cleveland market, we have a large supply of single-family homes, large supply of duplexes. What we have a very small supply of is going to be triplexes and quads. Now, when I teach you guys how to run your own comps, you take a highly populated area, right? An urban type area. I'm not talking like farmland, okay? Just like a very densely populated area like we have in the greater Cleveland area. I want you to do quarter mile comps over a six month uh, 
six month time period okay you're gonna look at your sold comps if you guys need access to comps to run your businesses go to holtonwise.com click the property search for sale tab and i'll give you my direct mls access to allow you to get your own comps whenever you want them you'll get the same broker access i have for comps so that's how you want to run your comps but in purposes of this particular property, I did it differently. I did not do a quarter mile by uh, six months, right? Because when I did that, I only had three comps to work off of, which is okay, but I wanted to give you guys a bigger picture. So since we have such a small inventory, I gave you guys quarter mile comps over the last two years, and I was able to pull up seven sales. Now, you guys would be doing very, very well because this one right here, 1670 Hillcrest, this triplex in a quarter mile of yours sold for 126000 And then the remaining six triplexes all sold for more than what you'd be all into this one. We got one at 165, one at 178, another at 178, one at 182, and then the last ones, 188 and 190. So. So I said, they price it great. They're at 135. We'll try to whittle them down just a teeny bit. Get it at 130. You put your 20 in. You're all in for 150. And you are priced better than six of the seven triplexes that have sold in the last two years. So I think you guys found yourself a pretty good property. I think that should be the strategy we take to try to take this one down for you. Of course, this is just the start of your due diligence. We also would want to write up that contract contingent on your own third-party home inspection, see if there's any other issues, right? I'm assuming there's probably not because that POS was fairly clear. Uh, but, of course, trust but verify. So we'll take a look at that. All right, welcome back, Simon. So that is my thoughts on the property. And uh, you had specifically given me a, a list of questions that you had, and I feel like that financial breakdown answered the majority of them except for two. Two more, which I think honestly kind of go hand in hand, right? One of your questions was, uh, should we go Section 8 tenants or regular cash-paying tenants, right? This is a you know, B-class neighborhood, and, and typically in B-class neighborhoods, I say, yo, go with the regular cash-paying tenants, guys. Uh, but this is where it goes with your other question. Your other question was, should you increase vacancy in today's market, right? Uh, I assume you're talking about today's market being that we're dealing uh, with COVID, right, and all the things that come across with COVID, right? You asked me if I've changed my underwriting standards when I look at these investments, right? So I think these two go hand in hand, right? Normally, guys, I like to go Section 8 all the time on D-class properties. Every single tenant I put in a D-class property, guys, I want that to be a, a Section 8 tenant. When I get up to C, I lean towards Section 8. Over the years, uh, doing this as much as I have, you know, I used to lean towards cash paying tenant because the bureaucracy and dealing with the housing authorities that handle Section 8, so it's a pain in the ass, but uh, throughout the years and my company growing and becoming, uh, you know, literally like, you know, the go-to uh, property manager landlord in that asset class. We've really developed a better relationship with the CMHA program. That's the, that's the housing authority. The CMHA, CMHA is the housing authority that handles the Section 8 program, if, if that verbiage confuses you guys. Uh, we developed our processes. Uh, you know, again, it's, it's a government bureaucracy, so it's still pretty messy, but... Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say, long-winded way of saying, I think the pros outweigh the cons. The longer I've been in this game, uh, uh, the more I see that, right? So we've started to to lean heavily into the Section 8 program and C-class properties. B-class, you're usually getting a better class of tenant, much less likely that you're going to deal with tenants not paying their rent. So we've been leaning towards cash-paying tenants there. But that's where it all ties in with COVID, right? With COVID, people that would normally be good, solid cash paying tenants through, you know, things that are completely out of their control, like their employer shutting down or this or that, you know, we are running the risk of people losing their ability to pay us rent on top of that. Are you a lender? If so, Holton Wise is looking to partner with you. If you're licensed in all 50 states, go to HoltonWise.com. Click the digital media tab to advertise on Holton Wise TV today. We are completely delayed, if not totally blocked, from evicting non-payers right now. So 
In a nutshell, the longest winded way I could possibly answer this question for you, Simon, is I believe right now in today's market, I, I think Section 8 should be something you look at, right? In all asset classes, I think Section 8 will allow you to continue to underwrite your properties using similar metrics we've used in the past because the big change is the frequency in which people uh, are unable to pay their rent and the time and effort it takes to, to remove non-payers from your properties, right? Section 8 alleviates all of that, in my opinion, because it's government guaranteed, right? You're not going to lose your Section 8 voucher because of COVID. So in my opinion, in today's market, Section 8 becomes even more important than it ever has in the past. So those are my thoughts on this property, Simon. Based upon your goals, what you're trying to accomplish, I, I think this is a nice property. I think it could work for you. I, it's obviously why you sent it to me. So uh, just in the private show notes below, or I'm sorry, the, the private email that I sent this to you, right? I sent this video to you in a private email, rather. Uh, go ahead and just reply to that email if you'd like us to make the offer. We're going to ask you a few follow-up questions and then get that back to my team. We'll submit the offer to the seller. Everybody else in the show notes below, that's how you can click to start working with my team on a video just like this to help you start, build, or grow your real estate portfolios. You could also just shoot us an email, give us your phone number. We'll call you, walk you through the process. That's all I've got for today's show, folks. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.